Hi guys and welcome to another EV6 video. If you're already a subscriber, thank you and welcome back. And please make sure that the notification bell is enabled. And if you're new, please consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell for obvious reasons, and feel free to browse. There are a lot of other videos that I've made on this car. Now, let's get started. For the model year 2023, Kia Canada has released uh, some updates. This information is currently not available for public but you can always call your local dealer and confirm whatever I'm gonna tell you. So let's get started. Uh, the color options. For the non GT line trims, the forest green and the glacier paints have been discontinued. So if you had ordered one, you might wanna call your dealer and confirm if you're still getting it. If you are one of those people who have only put a deposit down with the dealer, for sure you're not going to be getting this color because Kia Canada does not have your order yet. You're just in line at the dealer. And I can understand why car makers do that because reducing options speeds up the production. So I get it. For the GT line 1 and 2, the matte gray paint has been discontinued. It is now strictly reserved for the high performance GT version with 576 horsepower. Also, before it was a $1,000 option and now it's a $3,000 option. So that's it for the paint updates for the GT line and the non-GT line trims. Let's move on to uh, the pricing. I was expecting a substantial price bump, but it's actually not that bad. So for the rear-wheel drive standard range and the rear-wheel drive long range, the price has gone up by $1,000 Canadian. For the all-wheel drive long range, the price has gone up by $1,500 Canadian. For the GT line package one, which is obviously a package on top of the all-wheel drive long range, the price has gone up by $1,000. And for the top of the line, GT line package two, the price has gone up by $1,500 Canadian. This may not make much sense, but the way they've bumped up the price, the cheaper long range all wheel drive is $1,500 more now, but the higher trim GT line package one is only up by $1,000. My guess is that the long range all wheel drive and the GT line package two are what they're selling the most so that's why they've bumped up the price by $1,500 for these trims and the remaining only by $1,000 that's just my guess I could be wrong if there's any other logic in your mind let me know in the comment section below now let's get to the questionable update the EPA rating for all-wheel drive long range and the GT line package one has been increased from 441 kilometers on a full charge to 454 kilometers. But for the GT line package two, it's been dropped from 441 kilometers to 406 kilometers on a full charge. Considering the mechanicals the electric motors, the batteries on all three cars are identical. Horsepower, torque, everything is identical. But for some reason, the GT Line Package 1 and the all-wheel drive long range get an updated higher uh, EPA rating, but they drop it on the GT Line Package 2 substantially. And here's their logic. So apparently the GT line package two drivers drive their cars in sport mode, drive it hard, and it results in lower range, obviously. So they decided to just update the EPA rating for it, which is for lack of better words, stupid. And I'll tell you why. There are people like me who somewhat understand these things and then there are people who do not understand these things at all so when one of those people who are not technically savvy or do not understand all these things 
they go to kia.ca build and price the ev6 and they want the top of the line model because they want all the features and then they realize oh the top of the line has lower range so i'm just gonna go with the one below the gt line package one or even long range all-wheel drive depending on the budget because it's not only cheaper it has more range isn't that misleading isn't that wrong information isn't that disservice to the product itself because this car the ev6 was launched as the gt line package 2 in canada at least and these cars have been on the road for about five six months now and you can find screenshots all over the internet on different forums where people have proudly posted pictures of their estimated range showing in the 500s because they were pleasantly surprised to see they bought a car that was rated at 441 kilometers and they're getting in the 500s so obviously it's a good feeling plus turns out Kia is underrating this car it's capable of much more but they're being conservative it in one instance I even saw 600 kilometers now granted you have to make sacrifices to achieve that range but the range estimator on this car or people like to call it the gasometer GOM uh, is actually very accurate if you consistently drive like that so if somebody tuned their driving habits to achieve that 600 and if they continue driving like that they will keep getting that 600 number like for me i obviously drive in sport mode all the time i don't drive it hard all the time but i might engage in some spirited driving sometimes maybe i gun it sometimes maybe and i get between 385 to 400 kilometer now don't say i'm just proving the point of epa because all the gt line package 2 drivers do not drive like this i actually have a friend who gets 450 kilometers on this car actually his car is gt line package one never mind so i'm a bad example but you know who you are you drive this car not like me and you get in the 500s on the gt line package too let me know in the comment section below if you're one of those and you're watching this video prove me right you know i'm right it's just wrong there's no other way to say it to drop the epa rating on this car just because some drivers drive their car in sport mode and the range is lower if somebody with a long range all wheel drive or GT line package one was to do the same thing, drive it hard, drive it in sport mode, they would also get lower range. So what now? You're setting wrong expectations for them. Oh, 454 kilometers. Oh, I'm only getting 385, 400. Oh, I got light to. See what I mean? So let me know in the comments section below what you think of these updates. Did you pick the forest green or glacier? What color will you pick instead now? Did you pick the matte gray? What's gonna be your next option? And how do you feel about my rant on this updated range, especially for the GT Line package too, where they dropped it? Let me know in the comment section below. I love reading your comments and I always try to respond to them. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and thank you for watching.